everyone. Welcome to today's presentation. This is Selene here and I want to welcome you guys all here and I'm super excited to be able to share with you guys the information today on taking charge of your health and turning the course of our health towards one of vibrance and restoring that vitality. So let's go ahead and get started because I have a lot that I want to cover here. So first off, this presentation is designed for educational purposes only. It's not engaged in rendering medical advice, legal advice, or professional services. If you feel you have a medical problem, you should seek the advice of your physician or healthcare practitioner. So again, this here is about that journey of restored health, and it's part of my personal journey and my family's personal journey. And the five steps that we use to change that course of health and how you can resolve chronic health just by understanding what things like epigenetics really is. So let's go over who is this for. So this is for anyone who knows there is something more than the answers that we have been given by mainstream medicine. If you have been told that, you know what, there's nothing else you can do or we don't know why or, you know, your body's confused, this is for you because you have that instinct that says, you know what, there's something out there, there's an answer out there, that's what we're going to talk about today is what's out there, that other side of that equation. Those who have tried those conventional protocols or even the alternative protocols, but you know what? You're still having problems. You're still not finding success. If you feel like you've been spinning in circles and going around and around, even though you're doing like natural methods and natural ways, again, we're going to cover reasons why those things are spinning in circles. For any of those who are ready to say, hey, you know what? I'm ready to change the course of my health. I'm ready to take that transformation and I want to do this naturally. I don't want to use start using pharmaceuticals and drugs, we're going to talk about everything that I do and I talk about and what I teach is natural methods of healing, how we can tap into our body's innate healing system so we can support it in this battle and on this journey. So over the next about 45 minutes or so, we're going to talk about how we can break free of that cycle, that you know hamster wheel that we all seem to be on or many of us seem to be on, uh, at least here in the U.S., is we're just go around and around if we get a diagnosis, they give us a medication, or maybe we get an herb for that, and then we get, oh, there's more medication, oh, then now we have this problem. And it just seems like that pattern goes on and on and on, and we never can get to a resolution. And so we're going to talk about how to shift so we can get to a resolution and get off of this hamper, hamster wheel. We're going to give you the steps. I'm going to talk about the steps to finally feel like that, you know what, you are in control of your health and your illness. In your symptoms, you are the pilot and you are in the driver's seat. That was one of my biggest frustrations was feeling like there was no power. And that, okay, there's something that I know that we can do. What is it we can do so that I can do those sort of things? So we're going to help to empower you so that you can take control of your health. And then how to get yourself not just healthy enough where, okay, we can kind of get by, but we want to get back to that thriving state. I mean, this is about transcending. Um, one of the things I just love about... Um, my friend Holly and her message of transcending into wellness in the group is that we are moving beyond just the norm. Like we were created to have a life of vibrancy. So we're going to do that and talk about that in all areas of our life. And so we're going to learn that why when we're trying all these different things that it can ask why it's leading us further away from that solution or resolution and why it is that we see things chronically get worse and worse and worse. I'm going to help you to understand what's going on, the mechanisms behind that. And then also how to spot a practitioner who's really, truly helping you get to that root cause versus one that's just trying to give you that latest protocol. Um, you know, nobody knows everything. I don't know everything. So I cannot solve your problems. I can't solve my problems. I don't know everything. However, there's a component of the mindset of someone versus another mindset that makes a huge difference when we are trying to get to those answers. Um, so we're gonna talk about that as well. And then also to erase that fear of wondering, can I ever really get to where I want to get to? And have confidence that what you are doing is supporting your body. And that is going to work long-term, not just a Band-Aid because you know, of a very short-term approach or short-term um, effect. So here's what I'm going to promise you guys is that I'm going to teach you guys today a step-by-step -step strategy for transforming your health to get it to a real resolution, the direction you need to go and the steps for doing that. So if any of this sounds like you, then you probably need to, this, you're in the right place. Okay. So one thing I don't like is getting on these webinars and I realize like, oh my goodness, like this is not the information that I need. 
So let's get this over so you can know if any these things sound like you, these are the questions that we're going to talk about and this is what we're going to delve into. You. If you're someone who's been laying up awake at night seeking the answers to what is it that's fixing my health, if you're constantly like, okay, I know there's something out there. If I only knew what that was, then I would go do it. But I, I don't even know what it is that I don't know. Or perhaps that you are tired of all of the restrictions that seems like, okay, this is my problem, but now I have to, I can't do this and I can't do that. And then it's like, I have, you know, 50 million supplements that now I'm supposed to take. This is just too exhausting. This is frustrating. I can't do this. So if that's you, we're going to talk about that as well. Or maybe you feel lost in the medical system that just completely ignores your symptoms and labels you with just a diagnosis or says, oh, it's just all in your head. If that frustrates you and you're like, I cannot do that anymore, I am totally with you and we are going to talk about the solution for that today. Or maybe you're feeling betrayed because you've followed the advice of our conventional mainstream medicine and these interventions, these pharmaceutical interventions have resulted in not only did they not fix your problem, but now things are worse and you're having more issues and which is compounding even more and more and more. And it's like you put your trust in a uh, practitioner to help you and to guide you and to give you an answer to help bring you back vitality, but instead it's done the polar opposite. So that, I think feeling of betrayal was a big thing for me. And and our journey is going through and it's like, you know, I completely trusted that this was the right answer. I, you went to medical school for this to tell me what I need to do for health. Health it is vitality. It's not me going downhill. And so there's a huge, uh, if you feel that you, there's been trust broken and betrayal, I totally get that. That's where I was. And so we are going to talk about that and how to um, resolve some of that. Do you feel like that you've wasted time and money chasing unrealistic hope of ever getting better? Um, we went from coast to coast across the U.S. looking for answers, and it tons of money. I mean, if we look at the money that we have spent, definitely would buy at least one car, if not multiple cars, and maybe a small house, depending what part of the country you're in. And so, if you're feeling that you know we have put so much money, so much time, and we just really there's, there's no hope. We, there's nothing we can do. We've done, we've exhausted everything. We are going to hopefully re reignite your hope today. I really hope to be able to do that today. Do you feel alone? Because no matter how far you've searched and how much you've spent, you just cannot find someone who can really do that critical thinking and say, okay, look, let's look at that bigger picture. Let's, let's connect those pieces together. Instead of just compartmentalizing all of my symptoms, you're not alone. That is where I have been, that I understand that feeling. Um, and I hope at the end of this that you, uh, that you feel no longer alone, that there is somebody who gets it and understands how to put these pieces together, how to find the pieces so that you can put them together. So if you just feel like, you know what, if I only knew, and I've said this many times, that if I only knew what it is I don't know, like I know this much information, I know there's information out here, but I'm not even sure what it is, so how can I find it? How will I even be able to know that I found it? If that's you, then fantastic, because these are the things that we are going to cover today. So here's what the real issues are. And this is the core of we are trying to transform our health with these chronic illnesses, with autoimmunity, these sorts of things. This is the foundation. This is what I have learned over the last five or six years. And when I look back over the last 40 years, and especially the last about 20 to 25 years, of my health and my history, it's like, oh my goodness, this was the answer. This is where we have gone wrong. This is where we are, our navigation and our healthcare system is completely off balance. So the first thing is we have to, we have been taught that our instinct given to us does, is not real. We have also been taught that we don't have any responsibility. We can't really influence our health, that we're just, we're just born that way. There's nothing we can do. That instinct, we ignore that. That's just been kind of completely erased. And then we've also been taught that our body gets confused, that it doesn't really know what it's doing. These things are all lies, okay? So these things, we have to take those out of our foundation, our premise, and shift. If, as long as we continue to have these on our premise and as our foundation, we will never achieve what we're wanting to achieve with our health. 
So these things that we have been taught and indoctrinated with are false. So that's the biggest thing. We have to take a different step, or in order for us to take a different step in a different direction, we have to erase those things. You know, once we do that, we are no longer plagued with not knowing what we do not know. Because one, our instinct is pretty much dead on, what I have found dead on in most of the time. And if not, it is so much closer than us just completely ignoring it and blindly looking whatever we are taught to look. We can actually finally regain that joy and that hope that, you know what, we can, we can do this. Like, we can do this. I can take care and I can change my health. I have power to do that. I can do that. I just need the tools. I may need some help, but guess what? It's totally possible. It's totally doable. So those are, that's the very foundation that it takes for restoring our health. And my guess is most of you watching this already have that. You just don't have anyone to say, hey, yes, that's right. You can do this. You're probably up against that wall that people look at you and give you this like crazy look at you're from a different planet or they ignore you or, you know, scoff at you. No. Yes. Please follow that instinct. Cause I know those instincts are inside you because they're inside of me and I pretty would be pretty certain they're inside most of us. That's just how we were created. So who am I real quick? So if you don't know me, my name is Selena Rothenberger. I founded the Functional Perspective and the Functional Health Mama. I graduated from Functional Medicine University, a Dr. Sears wellness program. I did uh, have a certification in nutrigenomics, um, also in uh, functional immunology. I'm a mother of six. Only two of my children have survived. And I specialize in those who are suffering with chronic illnesses and autoimmunity to help regain their health and vitality, to help you to bring hope and to embrace that hope and that instinct. So that's what I do. And this is my journey. I'm going to share with you guys my journey and how it is that we have come to resolution in my child's health and where we continue on to get resolution in the areas that we've not fully achieved that resolution. So there's five pivotal moments in our journey as to what these were those key steps. I mean, there was, you know, like I said, we spent thousands and thousands of dollars and hours and hours and, you know, just years on this. And then I look at over this, you go, what happened? When I start to analyze, okay, where were these shifts at? Because we learned things along the way and there was different points along that way where it's like, oh, this makes sense. And it was one of those key areas. So these are the five key areas. Let me tell you about my son first and myself. So I suffered with, um, uh, chronic infertility. We had infertility for pretty much all of my life. Um, my periods and my cycles were pretty well jacked from day one. Uh, there was a lot of uh, weight issues that I've always had, those sorts of things. I um, didn't really suffer with anxiety or depression. I've always been pretty, had lots of energy and upbeat and positive, but I did have a lot of uh, hormonal imbalances from my youth uh, time which led to the infertility. We lost four children. And then our fifth child came along and we actually carried him pretty close to term. It was, we just ended up having a scheduled C-section a week before he was, uh, his due date. When he was born, he came out pretty much having GERD from day one. So we dealt with chronic GERD and reflux from his, the very, very beginning, had difficulty there. He had constipation. Um, there was a lot of uh, issues with undigested foods, sleepless nights, getting sleep was really, really difficult. He didn't have the failure to thrive. He was diagnosed with a failure to thrive. He had then went to RSV, chronic ear infections, chronic respiratory infections. Um, he had chronic skin issues. He started having eczema, multiple, multiple rounds of antibiotics. And there was, you know, during that time, that first part, those first years of his life, and we constantly went in um, because it was constantly something. We had the PPIs. And he was very, very susceptible to illnesses. It was almost as if, okay, you say the word cold, my child is going to get a cold. Please don't even say the word. And it was, I mean, it was just crazy. It was just so hard because I was constantly out trying to take care of him. Like when he had his respiratory illnesses, it was, you know, really difficult helping him breathe or worrying about him breathing because he was constantly coughing. And I was always worried, like, okay, where is he going to pick up the next illness? We just have to be careful. Like we couldn't go out to friends. We would have to be very limited. Like I just need to make sure that when we were going to have friends over or do social events, am I going to have the time after? Because I know he's going to probably get sick. The chances are really, really high. He's going to get sick. And am I going to have the time and energy to now deal with that? Because it's going to be at least a two or three week process of him getting through that illness. 
And so that was kind of, that's how, what I had to think about whenever we were going to go do these things. And it's like, instead of like, oh, this is so great for us to enjoy those times together. We really, from, as a mom, I didn't get to enjoy that part of it because I had to really worry about what was going on with his health. And then as we went to the doctors, I mean, we were, the, the first year or so of his life, we were there all the time. And we, you know, we never got answers. This is the answer that we got all the time. Oh, he's normal. That happens all the time going to grow out of it. It's okay, mom. You're a first time mom. He's normal. He's going to grow out of it. Guess what? He did grow out of it. I mean, they were kind of right. He did grow out of it. And this is what he grew into. He grew right into autoimmunity and he grew into type one diabetes. And so this is where my frustration, and I probably should say anger that I have with our system because I am not the only mother they have told that to, and I'm not the only mother and the only child who has autoimmunity. The autoimmunity is going off the charts now. Um, and so it just, we finally had a choice to make. Whenever we had that diagnosis, it was like, that's it. Are we going to continue down listening to this system who told me nine years ago, he's fine. He's normal. It'll be okay, mom. Your instinct, you know, to stop listening to that instinct of yours. It's wrong. No, my instinct wasn't wrong. Your instinct is not wrong. Moms, if anything, please, I believe your instinct and please do not dismiss your mama's instinct. I don't care what they tell you. Please find someone to help you to support you on that journey because your instinct is right. There's something there. You know, it may not be the diagnosis you're thinking, but there's something there. Your mama's instinct is the most powerful thing that our creator gave us. So please, 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 please listen to your instinct. And so that's where we were at. We were, he was life lighted to uh, Dallas. He was in DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. And so it was there that that was the, we completely changed our course. We stopped and said, okay, look, I'm not doing this anymore. And then I started looking back at all of the clues. I didn't even know what I didn't know. But at that point, I knew that, oh my goodness, there was clues all along. And so we decided at that point, we're not doing this. And so it was a, it was a journey on that to where, are we going to go the conventional way? Or are we going to go natural? We need to find out why. Nobody could answer, why did this happen? This is the answer we got. Well, there's environmental triggers. We don't know why. There's environmental triggers as to why this happened. It's type one, these autoimmunity situations, the body gets confused. There's some sort of environmental triggers. No one could ever tell me, what are those environmental triggers? What is it in the environment that triggers this response? Not a single one. We traveled from Washington, D.C. all the way to San Francisco. We live in Texas and several places in between. Not a single medical professional that's licensed by the American Board of Medical, the pediatrics, or any of the, 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 the conventional licensing could ever tell us what these things are. So this was our choice, is to say, okay, are we going to continue to listen to we don't know, or are you gonna be able to answer this why and what happened? Because that's at the core. I wanna know why this happened, what it is that my, body, my son's body is responding to. And if I will not stop until I have the answer for that. And so that's where my journey went, which then led to genetics and epigenetics and understanding what those things really are. Because it's not quite what we have been taught and what we've been led to believe. There's part of what we've been taught is, yes, very, very true. But on a whole, the pieces were just missing out on so much. So this is the new child in the U.S. So this is what's considered normal. However, there's a really a big deceit, deceitful thing going on when we talk about normal. The normal is, yes, what we see. It's common. This is not health. This is not normal. Our bodies were not meant to be, have chronic illnesses. It's that it is what we see everywhere. So it's become accepted as being normal. And that's the biggest lie being told in our medical uh, system is that these things are normal. It's normal for your child to have food allergies. It's normal to have autism. It's normal to have seizures. It's normal to have autoimmunity. No, it's not. Over half of our children have a chronic disease. And guess what? Almost half of those have multiple chronic diseases. This is not normal. It's, it's become 
common and accepted in our U.S. So that's the biggest thing is that we've got to stop trying to cure these diseases because this is not normal for us to have that. And the other part of that is that the disease really though, however, is really not the problem. So what the problem, let's, we start peeling back this disease equation and what the diseases really are. Um, this, when we shift the foundation on all of these diseases and all of these labels, things start to change and open up. It's like, oh my goodness, of course. So back in the 1800s, there was uh, America's eating habits. We decided to, we're going to now get involved in our food and modifying our food. 1894, USDA published their first dietary recommendations on foods. W.O. Atwater was the main contributor to those recommendations. Uh, there was a woman that's usually cited as her uh, that came in ap excuse me, after. But this is when we decided, oh, you know what? The foods are lacking things. We're going to start putting things like iodine, B vitamins uh, in those sort of things. Uh, we improved our sanitary conditions as well. Chronic health issues were the number one um, I'm sorry, chronic health issues were not the number one issue back then. Infectious diseases were. There's a difference between chronic health issues and infections. And what we saw back then, people were dying from things that were infections. Those sort of things that related, not the chronic health issues like we have today, are epidemics of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, GI disorders, the mental health. The, the mental health state of our children is just mind-boggling what they are dealing with. So it completely shifted the, the, the scope of, okay, what is it that we are actually dealing with? Now, the first time in our history, our younger generation is sicker than their parents. This is disturbing, it's horrific, and I say it's criminal. There is, following what we have followed, the path that we are on is killing and hurt, harming our children. This is not okay in my book. And I'm like, no, enough is enough. Like I've lost four children already. My uh, two children that I have now both have chronic illnesses. One is a type one diabetic. The other one has something called arthrogryposis. This is joint contractures, which again, this one actually goes back to so many pieces that were missed on my health as a mom prior to conceiving. This is why we had all of the infertility. So when we start looking at all the history and all those pieces, it's just like these things were missed by the conventional mainstream because they are not taught these things. So I want to say when it comes to conventional doctors that I understand that they are not taught holistic medicine. Okay. I really truly believe they all got into the field because they have a true heart and passion to help others. I don't believe that I, that they went into this, oh, just to go make money, blah, blah, blah. I don't believe that at all. I think these are great people who went in with very good intentions. However, the indoctrination has gotten them off path. And we have created a huge mass of people who have lost the ability to critically think, whether willfully or because of deception. And that's where the problem lies, is in that system. The people, I think, have great hearts and their intentions and motives were well. So with that that's our new child in the U.S. So let's first understand that curing the disease is not the answer. The disease isn't the problem, okay? The disease is just a label that we have been giving of these symptoms, a cluster of symptoms, and it's the body's natural response to an imbalance, and we want that response. Stopping the firemen from coming to put out the fire is not what we want. We need the firemen coming. Okay, the sirens are loud, they may tear up our yard and create a lot of other collateral damage, but we need them to come put out the fire, because if we don't, the fire is going to spread and more damage is going to happen. So the conventional model, what it does is it blocks these symptoms, and it's a stop, it attempts to stop the immune response. And it is a myth and a lie that stopping all this stuff is actually going to help us heal. Because our body needs every bit of that immune response to get to the resolution phase. And so that is one of the biggest myths that we have been told is, oh, we got our body is confused. And here's the thing. I know that you guys already know this. And the problem most likely is that you have been told that you're crazy or you've been ignored and scoffed at and just made to feel like, okay, I don't know what's going on because I don't have a medical degree. They do. They're the experts, blah, blah, blah. No. 
we already, you know this, we all know this and we embrace this in other areas of our life. How many of you would go to a mechanic, your car's not running well, and they say, oh, it's a bad, you got a bad spark plug. And you know what, this valve here, is, you need to replace it. This valve's not working. That's okay. We're just going to bypass. You don't really need that valve anyway. You don't need that spark plug. We're just going to take it out. I know every single one of you be like, look at them like they had three heads. And like, okay, thank you. Um, I, I, um, I need to take my car now. Maybe it's fine. You would run, never let that person work on your car. You would not go back. And you would certainly be warning as many people as possible to say, you know what? This guy is a, don't go there. Like, who would do that? That's what we do to our bodies every day. That's what we've been doing. And we can see the results of that. Because what would happen if you said, oh, we're just going to take that spark plug out. Your cars wouldn't run. Our bodies are not running well. We are blocking things. We are going against the body's innate healing system. Now, let me, just because I know I'm going to get attacked on that, but which is fine. There is an acute situation where, yeah, you need to take out the spark plug, replace it, and put in a new one. So we do have, the modern medicine has wonderful acute care. It's amazing at acute care. We have broken bones. We have things that happen, boom, like that. We need that fixed. That's the model. It's an acute care model but it should not be masquerading in a chronic health situation. We need to get it only back into a acute care and stop meddling in areas that it doesn't belong. It does not belong in these chronic health situations, which are long-term things that happen over time. So that's the difference between the acute care model. But yes, a broken bone, let's go fix the broken bone. The broken bone didn't just, okay, poof, happen overnight. Sometimes that happens in those situations. You really need to be in a holistic model. But I fall, I break my arm, yeah, I need to go get that fixed. That's the acute care model. So please allow that inner instinct to come out. That's the, the biggest thing is to shift from the disease is not the answer. As long as we still keep trying to chase that disease, we're going to find problems. And so allow that instinct to come out that there is something else. And this is what the way the disease works. There's an environmental trigger. What is that trigger? I don't know what yours are, but here are some of the things that they can be. They can be toxins. They can be stress. They can be the foods that you're eating. They could be from your mother, the stress that she had, emotional trauma, uh, pathogens, mold, bacteria. Um, those sort of things are just pretty much everything that is, impacts us, anything in the environment, those things can trigger it. And it basically can be the straw that breaks the camel's back. So whatever happens to set you off, let's say that it's mold, for instance, there's going to be an immune response. We have an immune system that says, oh, we need to go take out care of this. There's several stages to the immune response. The first stage is very inflammatory and it's protective for us. It needs to go out and part of it is you've got cells, they're going to go and wrap around other cells. That's going to also create inflammation. So it kind of helps to shield us. Like when you burn yourself, what happens? It blisters up. We need that to help protect for what's later on for that new cell growth to help repair. We don't, oh, blister up and we pop the blister. What happens? It takes longer. You now have a higher risk of infection, those sort of things. So think of this internally, those things happen. We have pathogens come in. It's the same as we burn ourselves. We want to protect that protective barrier. We don't want to, oh, stop that burn from doing what it needs that first spot response. So that inflammation, okay? So that puts us in a sympathetic state. The sympathetic state is a stressful state. But we need some of that. We need part of that for that immune response to work. There's two states. We have a sympathetic state and a parasympathetic state. The sympathetic is stressful. The parasympathetic is like that peaceful, restful, digest state. And the easy way to remember that is you have sympathetic stress, parasympathetic peace. So we need both of them. Okay. They both are very, very beneficial. They need to be in harmony. We need to have balance. Okay. So this is the, the, the order that it goes. So then that, that now will take care of whatever that trigger was. This is the way it's supposed to work. The ideal situation is, okay, we go through these steps. We got rid of the pathogen, that mold. We took care of all of that. We have resolution, okay? This is the order that our immune response goes. This is what, how that works. However, we've decided that, oh, wait a second here. The inflammation, that's bad. Oh, I'm sorry. And then it goes to the parasympathetic state. And... We decide to block out those things. Or if we are continually 
involved, where we keep continually, the, the mold, we don't get away from the mold, we have mold keep coming on, or whatever the toxin is, we keep having an immune response, we never get to that parasympathetic state, which means we never get it resolved, and we are stuck in that sympathetic state. And it goes on and on and on, which then is going to also fuel the inflammation and it's going to keep this thing going on. And then we finally get labeled with the disease. We start having different symptoms and whatever this cluster of symptoms, oh, we may get a diagnosis of, oh, this is a disease you have. The disease is not the, what started this equation. The disease comes after. So we cannot cure the response. If we want to stop the response of these, these things manifesting, we're going to continue on like our children are. And it's going to continue to get worse, okay? What we need to do is look at why is there a problem? Look at the entire picture. We want our body fighting the battle to protect us. We want it to deliver us from danger. That's what it's wanting, it's trying to keep us from the danger. During that time, that inflammation creates collateral damage, okay? But as long as we allow the response to do what it needs to do, it will have the backup, the cleanup crew will come in, clean those things up, okay? We need a all hands on deck approach from our body when it comes to these chronic health matters. Cutting out these things leads to the situation that our children are in. This is sort of how, to, how all of these things fit together and how the genetics and epigenetics. So we have our DNA, okay? That help, that's going to go to the protein creation. It's going to tell us and it's going to, our body use those biochemical processes from our genes. It's going to make new cells. Well, the environment now affects how those cells respond. They will send out different cellular signals, which then in turn affects the DNA, activating the DNA in these genes. And so it can go in this little circle. There's a lot of bi-directional between our genetics and the epigenetics. So if we constantly are putting a heavy burden on our genes, then it puts it, they have, uh, they can get very compromised. So now what they're putting out is not the greatest building blocks. So now the environmental factors create more problems because they have more free reign and it gets to be in a very downward spiral that catch 22 in a very negative way. However, it can also go the other direction. Whenever we are optimizing our genes and providing them what they need, they can really hamper down the environment, which can take care of those things. And it can work in a very positive way, which we, goes to the health and the vitality. So the genetics and epigenetics work in tandem in a bi-directional relationship. It's not that we have this gene and we're stuck with, we can't do anything about it and our body is confused. That's not what's going on. So we want the disease is a natural response, or I'm sorry, I should say the symptoms because the disease is something that just a man has decided to label symptoms. I really need to change that. It's the symptoms are a natural response to an imbalance. We want that response. We need those symptoms because they are our check engine lights. If we did not have warning lights on our cars, then our cars are gonna fall apart because all of a sudden one day, boom, the engine is gonna stop running. We don't take a check, the, the oil light comes on in our car, do we put tape over it so that we can't see it and all of a sudden now it's not low on oil? Or do we say, okay, let's take out the bulb because I'm tired of looking at that light bulb. I'm just gonna take that, that oil light bulb out oh my goodness, our cars would die. <laughs> like they would stop running. Why are we doing that with our bodies? I mean, the common sense, that's the frustrating part about me is that common sense. So we want the check engine lights coming on. We need to listen to them, which goes back to our instinct tells us these things. The conventional model blocks the symptoms and stop, tries to attempt to stop that immune response. And it's a myth that, okay, we can block all these things, stop all these things, and that's gonna help us to heal. It doesn't work that way. And again, you know this and you embrace this everywhere else in your life. And every, everyone embraces this. So allow that inner instinct to come. That's the number one shift in foundation is that, you know what, I'm going to start listening to my instinct. If my instinct says that, I'm going to find out why is it telling me and I'm going to listen to that and follow the common sense, which leads to this next one here, the pills, right? Supplements are not the answer, okay? So I know that most of you probably are like, okay, I don't wanna be doing the pharmaceuticals. You understand that how they're blocking things, yes. Supplements too, though, are not the answer. So here's what the typical we hear all the time, and this happens even in the natural, holistic, functional world, is, oh, hey, what's wrong with me? Well, here's your problems. You need too much. You've got, you're not getting enough sleep. You're not getting enough exercise. You're needing glasses. You have hormonal imbalances. Okay, what's the pill I need for that? That's what happens. No, the pills are not the answer, okay? So while supplements may be beneficial and helpful, 
we cannot just swap out pharmaceuticals for nutraceuticals. So the nutraceutical industry is escalating just like the pharmaceutical industry. It's completely insane. It is matching the same sort of growth as we see in the pharmaceutical industry. And the pills are not the answer. Supplements are not the answer. We have to look holistically to get our body back in health. Just swapping those things out, we're going to keep spinning in circles. So that's why you're like, you're taking this natural herb, you're taking, you know, natural things, but you're still not having resolution. And that's because that's not really the answer is not just taking a pill for that. You did you just take a pill to get to the situation where you're at? No, you didn't. So, I mean, perhaps there could be some people who took pills just because you took a pill. I'm not sure why you would go take a pill if you didn't need one or didn't think you had one, but that's not how we get there. That's not how we get out of it. Again, just because we put all natural, green, nice, good, you know, environmentally friendly tape over our check engine lights doesn't fix our car. It's still going to leave us in the same way. We have to look differently if we want different results than what we see around us. So if we're looking for that magic pill, whether it's pharmaceuticals, whether it's an herb, you know, a nutraceutical, we lose out on that potential of our body. We really lose out on the amazing things that our immune system has to do. So if we don't change that approach, we are going to lose out. So what do we need to do here? The first one is, the next thing is, we have to tap into that secret weapon. We have an amazing weapon built inside of us. That's our master healing system, our immune system. So let's tap into that. So we approach this where all systems are looked at in context with relation to one another. It's very personalized. We have to really rethink all of these things because what we have been taught, there's just so many myths in those. We have to rethink, okay, what is food and medicine, genetics, epigenetics, health? How do all these things fit together? And when we start doing that, then we can become empowered. It's about becoming empowered. So once we were empowered with these things, these steps, and it was pretty much we progressed. It wasn't all at once. I mean, it took us years to get through each one of these. It just really, each one kind of catapulted us so much further. It was like you get to the next step, and it's like, oh my goodness, you learned so much more. And then each one just kind of grew and grew and expounded on that. So the U.S. is the wealthiest nation in the world, but yet, and we spend a ridiculous amount of money, billions and billions and billions and billions of money on pharmaceuticals. However, we are the worst when it comes to our health. And so, or or in the bottom, I guess we're not the worst, we're the bottom. So the way that model works, you have all these different specialists. You've got your psychiatrist, your pulmonologist, your uh, endocrinologist, all these different doctors, and they all work only on that particular system. None of them ask, why is this happening? Like outside of only their little system, or how is it related to all of these other things? How, all they do is like, oh, there's your disease. There's the cluster of symptoms. We're going to give you that label for that disease. And here's your pill for that. So they're looking at it from the wrong direction. They block receptors. They block symptoms. They block the innate response of our healing system. And it increases the frequency of adverse health. And this is what you see. The symptom, you get a diagnosis of medication. A symptom, another symptom, a new one, another one. And then another one. And how many times does this go on and on and on and on? Did you know that our children, the average number of prescription drugs for our children is 4.2? Why are our children on prescription drugs? First off, the average is 4.2 for our children. That is not healthy. We were not born with prescription deficiencies. We did not see this in the past where children were having chronic heart disease, cancer, all of those things, they may have died from infectious diseases, communicable diseases that are resolved through whenever we change our um, sanitary conditions, made a huge impact on that. So by the time they're 80, guess what we can look forward to? Over 29.1 is the average by the time we are 80. I'm sorry, that's not the course that I want my children on. That's not the course that I went on. This is not okay. The average for the person in 2013, and these were the old averages. So I got these old averages from six years ago was 12.2 per person. Like guys, this is not okay. Like there's a problem. 
Like this is not normal. This is not healthy. This is not optimal. So this is the approach we took. We take a functional, holistic, natural medicine. There's different ways to term it. It's we're looking at why is there a problem? So the body, there's these check engine lights. Why does that check engine light come on? What is that check engine light telling us? <coughs> Excuse me. We support the body. So when that check engine light comes on, oh, it needs more oil. Let me go give it some more oil. Okay, do you guys you put your oil in your cars every single day? No, what would happen? You would overflow on oil and it would be just as damaging as if you didn't put any oil in your car, right? We need to have that balance. So we understand the symptoms and the signs and the signals our body is giving us. We give it what it needs and that's it. We don't just, okay, keep pouring oil or gas. We don't stand there pouring gas in our gas tank and just let it overflow everywhere. The same with our body, with the supplements that we take, with the nutrients, with the things that we put in our body, the things that the environment that affects our body, we need to take that same approach. We identify the where is the body needing help at? Where are these engine lights coming out? Where is the problems at? We're going to utilize the food and fuel that our body recognizes to support that response. So we're going to use things that it comes in. It's like, oh, I know what this is. This is exactly what I need. This is a nutrient. This is real food, not man-made things. So they can recognize and not spend time like, okay, what is this supposed to be? How am I supposed to use this? Okay, we don't put waters in our gas tank just because it's liquid. Okay, when we use supplements, it's short term. Like the long term goal is to get it out of the negative, get it back into the positive. Just like with the oil, we put enough oil in, get it filled up, and let's move on our way. Okay, we don't put oil in every single day just because oil's good for our car. We need to keep our, our engine lubricated. Let's just put some extra oil in it. Okay, so we got to look at the effects of the herbs and the, the food because they can be very powerful because that's what our body recognizes, okay? So we look at all of those things. We're looking at everything holistically and supporting the way nature is meant to be. So we're going to promote, when we do that, we have this stress restful state, okay? So we really want to promote that parasympathetic state because that helps to put an end to that uh, fight or flight mode, that nonstop, constantly on the go, stressful mode. They balance one another out. We need both and we need them pretty much on a daily basis. We're going to optimize that rest and relaxation. So when we have that downtime, we're getting the most out of it. If you were trying to sleep and you had lights on and blaring music and all that kind of stuff, you don't get restful sleep. The same with our body. If there's constantly stress going on inside, inflammation, it's not going to be able to do what it needs to do to help repair. So we need to have a, a nice balance on that. We're going to ensure that there's quality fuel for our master healing systems. That was a big thing was what we did is it was right away, boom, there's no more uh, processed foods. I mean, we had done, that was one thing that was very um, challenging for us because whenever my son was diagnosed, uh, we were doing things naturally. We did everything organic. We made our own bread. We made, uh, we were doing a lot of herbal things already. Um, and it was like, we stopped doing prescription medications. I thought that we were fine. I thought once we started using the herbs and we started making our own food, however, we did eat out some, we, you know, he pretty much was a, all he would eat was pasta um, and bread. It was like, it was a gluten diet, pretty much strictly gluten diet. Um, and so once we changed, whenever this happened in, in 2014, we changed. And so since then, he only eats food we make. Okay. We, he doesn't eat anything that's processed. Everything is natural. Everything is free of uh, pesticides is to our best ability. Um, it's all real food that his body can recognize. Say, Oh, I know what to do with that. Okay. So we want to make sure that we're giving the fuel that it needs. And then the activity, this is another one which we have been, uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding on activity and the role that it plays in our immune response and, and healing. So activity can be beneficial or it can be negative. Again, it's just like the oil in our cars. We need to have balance. And so when it comes to, if you've gotten to a point of autoimmune, like whenever we get my son, like with him, with the autoimmunity, He's very, very sensitive to the stress and activity is going to feed a lot more on that stressful side, that cortisol. So the cortisol is a, it, it's part of the immune response. We need the cortisol, but again, we need it in balance. So many times we have to reassess activity and look at, okay, this may not be what my body needs right now. We need to not just sit and be completely immobile, but we need to not push the body to a 
towards the sympathetic side. We just need to keep things moving in a slow, gentle manner. Sometimes we just need a very slowly moving stream. We don't need a rushing, gushing, you know, rapids all the time, especially in the, when there's chronic situation going on. So we really need to make sure that we have the appropriate activity that's specific for you. So, and you or your child, what's going on right now for you? Maybe less is best. Um, maybe it's a situation where, yeah, you do need more activity. It really is very, very specific. There's not a one size fits all. Okay, we need to look at removing the gas that's going on the fire. So there's different types of immune response. You have a pathogen driven immune response and then you have like an inflammation driven immune response. And then you could have where both of them are involved. And so we need to first make sure we are getting rid of that pathogen. We need to stop putting the fuel on the fire and then we can address whatever is going on inflammation wise. There's the damage that comes from the tissue and dealing with that pathogen, there's going to be collateral damage. And so we've got to make sure that we are looking at and identifying what's going on, removing things which are adding fuel to the fire because that fire will self-perpetuate, especially if you've already gotten to the point of where you've been diagnosed with autoimmunity or you have these chronic, chronic health issues that are long-term. So it's looking at all those things and removing those things. So to transform our health, this is one of the most important things, to transform our health, we have to transform how we approach the problems with our health. So if we want different results, we need to do different things to get those different results, which comes to the genetics component and completely rethinking genetics. Like we often think of, okay, genetics has our eye color, our height, our hair color, those kinds of things we really can influence. However, a huge part of our genetics is how we make our nutrients. It's the biochemical processes that's going on. How do we clear toxins and how we make our own antioxidants? We could never, ever, ever eat enough antioxidants to clear out the oxidative stress in our bodies just from normal day-to-day -day living. If we didn't have, we had a perfect world with nothing, no negative effects. We, this part of living creates oxidative damage. We can never clear all that out with the foods that we eat. So we make something called glutathione. It's one of our master antioxidants. That's something that we make in our body. And it's tons of thousands of times more powerful than the antioxidants we get in food. So our genes are what's involved in making the antioxidants. Our genes are what's involved in creating the things so that we can clear out toxins, so that we can make a lot of these nutrients. So that's the genetics, and the epigenetics are going to affect how those things operate. They can put an extra burden on them, or we can support them so that they can work flawlessly. So it's either side. That's where we start looking at genetics. We're not looking to go, let's go find the disease because we were born with this disease. That's just not really how it works. <laughs> so this here is just a short overview of looking at, this is a very, very general overview, looking at some of the key cycles that of, um, our body needs for that core immune response. We need the methylation cycle, the methionine cycle, the folate cycle, the two of those work together for methylation. The biopterin cycle, the bioterin cycle, that often is thought of as our neurotransmitter cycle. However, it does so much more than that. And then we have our uh, transliferation cycle, which is down there at the bottom. Uh, that's our detox cycle. Those cycles work hand in hand, there's a lot of cross communication going on. There's things that are made in one that's used in the other. So they're very, very tightly connected. So when we are looking to transform our health, really making sure that we are supporting these pathways. And by that, I don't mean say, oh, I'm low in SAMe, let me go take some SAMe. I'm low in glutathione, let me go take some glutathione. No, that is not at all what I'm saying. And those things can create a lot of problems. And that was part of the challenges that we had when we first started out on this path was we were using herbs. We were using natural things like natural, the, the folate and sort of things, but it wasn't helping because we weren't really supporting where the body was needing help. So here's another look at the neurotransmitters and how these things work at, you know, in uh, back and forth. This is a serotonin. Um, all, there's all these things that go on and on and on. And we look at how the pathway, like this one leads here, then that one leads there. There's a lot of different things that it will affect back bi-directionally. And so, this here is something that we started using that um, it's functional genomic analysis. And it really has, this has been one of the final, the latest, the most recent, I shouldn't say final, because there's always going to be more uh, steps on our path. But this is with the most, uh, the biggest step that we made whenever we finally were able to look at the genetics, the symptoms, 
and the lab results and the environment, put all those things together to see how are our genes expressing. Because if we go back here and look at these genes, just because we maybe have a genetic SNP doesn't mean that we do definitely have a problem there. So we can look and see instead as how are these things operating? You know, isn't there a check engine light coming on? Do I need to support somewhere here? Do we need to do the detox? So this is our bioterror, or very, very short overview of our bioterror side. This is where I was talking about it's so much more than our neurotransmitters. So when we start looking at these things more holistically, like, okay, just the tryptophan cycle alone. So tryptophan, we often think of, oh, that's what makes me sleepy, right? It does help and it does work in, it's, it's a precursor in some of the melatonin, which is, makes us sleepy. However, only about 10%, it depends on the, the sources and the research, it varies, but roughly 10% plus or minus goes to the melatonin. The rest of it goes over here to this uh, tyrosine quinolic acid pathway. And so if you look at things such as, do a search like on autism, uh, ADHD, and tyrosine, tryptophan, quinolic acid, you will find a plethora of studies that say, that show that pathway is super active, that quinolic acid is really high. The tyrosine is very protective. The quinolic acid is an excitotoxin, okay? So that when we have excess of that, it can create a lot of damage and create a lot of inflammation, create more issues, more issues, more issues. So when we start seeing these things out of balance, we get to ask, why is that out of balance? If we don't have enough melatonin, we can't sleep, why is it out of balance? Well, part of that is you see here the B6 and the SAME. So B6 is something that's needed. It's a cofactor needed to get the, the 5-HTP, which is after the tryptophan, to make serotonin. And then from the serotonin to melatonin, we're going to need CME in that cycle. Well, that CME comes from that B, the, the methylation cycle that I showed earlier. So that's how we're, this is just one part of that communication, okay? But here's what I'm going to go on about where most of the tryptophan goes to and why this is so important in chronic health. It's because after that quinolytic acid is something called NAD. The NAD is vital for our methylation cycle to make SAME, to keep things moving around properly. NAD is vital for things in our detox pathway. NAD goes on to make and to support NADH, NADP, NADPH, which are used in hundreds of processes and the ones that are core at our immune response. And so if we don't have the NAD, guess what happened? We have that, that quinolytic acid backing up. What is that telling us? It's telling us that something downstream is clogged. So when we start thinking, oh, what could be clogged? What's downstream? NAD, NADPH, other things down there that are really important. Those things are not, there's somewhere that's backed up. Our body, the stress pushes more down that pathway. Why? Because it needs the NAD and all the other things that happen at that to deal with the stress and the inflammation and the immune response. So we start critically thinking and peeling back and saying, oh, why are these levels out of range? Why am I depleted? Why is this over and abundant? Just giving it these things, just, oh, if I just gave you a whole bunch of NAD and your body can't process it, guess what? It doesn't solve the issue. It's going to create more issues because now you've got this, all of this nutrients that your body can't do anything with to begin with. So that's why it's vital that we look at things holistically. And so once we started changing that with my son's health, and we did that slowly over time as we came across, we met with other practitioners, we connected with others. Um, it was interesting how, you know, our first part of our journey, you know, we, we went all across the country and it was, we did see some that were natural uh, minded and holistic or um, functional, but it still wasn't quite what we were needing because it was still more of, oh, here's your diagnosis, here's your nutraceutical for that. However, I could have connected since then with many, many other practitioners who understand we, there's so much more to that. That's not really what's going on. We've got to look at the bigger picture. So understanding biochemistry and understanding the biochemical processes and that is there's cofactors involved. And if we interrupt, if I give melatonin, well, guess what? That's so that our body say, oh, we don't need the serotonin because we've got enough. So we have to look upstream and downstream. We have to look at both directions and sideways. Like, what is the signal of serotonin levels going to do to other areas of the health? What is the NAD? There's so much crosstalk that goes on that is really vital and important. We have to transform our thinking. We have to stop thinking that, oh, I can just take a pill for that because it's not just taking a pill for that. For instance, with this, there's also iron is needed 
for to get to that NAD. We have to have optimal iron regulation before in that BH4 to make the BH4, which is upstream from the tryptophan. For the tryptophan to get to the chironine, quinolic acid, we've got to have optimal iron regulation. If we don't, this doesn't happen. It creates more free radicals. It creates more inflammation. And it's not just this one pathway that that happens at. In the immune response, but trying to get rid of uh, bacteria and whatever kind of inflammation, whether it's bacteria driven or tissue driven, we're going to keep, it's going to excess or to increase if we don't have the iron regulation. So just, there's so many things. So this is not even just barely skimming the surface. Um, so it's really vital that we transform that thinking. And that's just not what is taught in the medical, the conventional medical field. So let me just recap here real quick. Here. I went over a lot and I need to kind of take a break here. I will keep going on way too far. So at this point, we all know that we have to address the root cause. What is driving the immune response? Is this pathogen related? Is this inflammation related? Is it both? Pills are not our answer, okay? We have to use the secret weapon, our, that immune response for us to get to the resolution. So let's look at the final pieces of transcendental wellness and what happened, like how we were able to resolve all of my child's problems except for his type one diabetes, his, his eczema, he doesn't have that anymore. He doesn't have chronic ear infections. He doesn't have the GERD. He doesn't have the constipation. All of those other things, we have resolved. We are left with still working on resolving the type one, which I believe can be done. And I believe we will be able to do that. So here's the thing, protocols are not the answer. So we have to stop chasing protocols. I am guilty of this. I'm guilty of all of the things that I mentioned today. These are things that we did. And this is, we came up against those brick walls and it's like, oh, I now I know why. Okay, so I'm not, um, we have done every single one of these things that I'm talking about, and that's how I know they do not work. Um, so the protocols are not the answer. We have over 70,000. This was a year ago whenever I first put this presentation together. 70,000 books on diets and weight loss. Okay, there's 30,000. If you start looking at these other ones, which is more the categories you see listed below, is the other one. Um, so 30,000 protocols here protocols are not the answer. You know why? They're not taking into effect the burden that's on your immune system. They don't have a, don't know what's going on in all with your genes when you have a SNP or not, when you're predisposed to having a two-lane highway versus the four-lane highway or a one-lane highway versus a four-lane highway. And they don't know, is your highway working well or not? They're not looking at the entire picture. They're not looking at, okay, what's going on with your body? There's just too many nuances to that. So protocols, generally what I have noticed, they will help for a short while, but I have rarely, rarely see them actually somebody resolved and be done with it and nope, they're great. So they just are not addressing things holistically. Many of them don't teach the balanced holistic living. It's strictly, it's compartmentalized just like the convention, like we're only gonna focus on X, Y, Z, and we're gonna forget about the rest of the things that affect our health, all the rest of that environment that affects the genes and affects how the genes respond, affects the burden on those genes. Many of these restrictive ones will lead to things like muscle loss, nutrient losses. Um, the restrictive ones can be very helpful. There's fasting is, can be amazing and do wonderful, wonderful things for helping to reset the, the immune response. However, we gotta be careful because we can also exacerbate in some situations, but long term on these restrictive diets and these things that we're restricting foods and nutrients, it just really limits. It's like we're just kind of putting a small funnel in the gas tank. We're only going to allow tiny little bits of things in. We're not going to really give the oil. We're going to give you gas, but not the oil. Our car needs everything to run. So in order for it to get to the resolution phase, we need all, all nutrients involved. So we've got to be very careful about long term uh, protocols and diets. And just because, oh, I was diagnosed with XYZ, there's the protocol for that. It should work for me, but I feel terrible. Yeah, we need to get out of that mindset, okay? Oh. Just as we're not gonna find a pill, we're not going to find a protocol and the latest diet is not going to fix us. So we have to get out of this plug and play, quick fix model if we want real resolution of the chronic illnesses in our society, in our health. 
So we have to look at these things. This is how we do that. So this here, like, is, for instance, the uh, part of the detox and methylation cycle, sort of. It's another condensed version. I mean, there's, I couldn't put a chart in that has everything because it just kind of, like, there's so much on it. But basically, you look at some of the cofactors, such as B6, magnesium, zinc, and selenium, are vital for these two cycles. The methionine is up top, and the transliteration is below. The, B, those, the, the uh, vitamins and minerals on the left are the nutrients needed for the cofactors involved. It's not the only ones. These are just some of the key ones. So what you do instead is let's look and see what are foods that are rich in these things. The natural food sources our body can process and utilize so much easier than these things than in a supplement. And so one of the, and I should have put this on here, and I thought that I did, but I don't think I did. There's a place called nutrition, I think, dot self dot data or nutrition, nutrition data dot self dot com, I think. But you can put in the foods that, you, that you're eating for the day, and it will give you information on what's the micronutrients, you know, the minerals, the fats, the sugars, breaks it down micronutrient-wise, like even into like the types of sugars and the types of fats. But that way you can understand, what am I kind of getting? Where am I at? What does my diet kind of look like? You know, does it look like, oh, I'm consistently really, really, I'm not really getting much zinc. I need to find ways I can boost zinc with foods because you're going to have other cofactors involved in nature. Um, long before we say, oh, let's go take a zinc supplement. I'm not saying like, we, we don't want to go that route. We have to first look at how can we naturally boost these things. And then we can look at other things. Do I have symptoms showing this, that I'm, have, that I'm zinc deficient or whatever it is? It's about putting all the pieces into context before we jump out and get um, a protocol or jump out and get supplements for that. So that's where we restart rethinking these biochemical processes and saying, okay, what needs to happen to get from methionine to SAMe? What is all needs to happen for that to happen and without any extra stress? What does stress, how does that affect that process? Because there's things that will slow down our genes. Stress can speed up or slow down. Different levels of things can speed up, slow down. So we need to look at that first. Then we add the genetic component onto it. The genes tell us, you know what, we are predisposed to probably being slow here or you know we're predisposed for things to go really fast here so we've got to take those things all into account whenever we're formulating a plan to say okay we are in this ditch how are we going to get out of it okay so looking at all of those pictures to that is how we transform our health and rethinking that so when we look at the fuel that our body needs food is what it needs and we combine all of that that fuel with the other things that it needs that's how we can put the pieces together. That's how we can get to that resolution phase. And so that's when we can experience the true healing. And so that's when we started looking at all of those answers. And we started implementing the genetics and the epigenetics and supporting these pathways at the very core, things like trace minerals and those sorts of things. Like my son has had profound impacts on his blood sugar regulation and his insulin, the amount of insulin that he needs in a very positive way. So while we have not resolved and um, his need for insulin, um, it's made this amazing, I mean, I'm just really floored at the amount of difference it's made when we've started implementing some of just the very basic concepts of, oh, let's make sure your body has a few of these building blocks so that it can do what it needs to do because it can regulate all this stuff way better than I can, than anybody else can. We just, we, you know, as science knows a ton of stuff, I don't know enough, as much as I know that I do tons and tons of research, I'm very, very a biochemical geek. I love biochemistry, and I love geeking out on all this kind of stuff. Even then, there's so much that I don't know. We can never know enough to do all the things that, the things that our body does uh, on a daily basis, and especially when it comes to the immune response. Like, I don't know as to whether or not, you know, but if I can give the body say, hey, here's the building blocks, go do what you need to do, it can take care, take, take care of those things. So that's the approach that we take. The final thing on that, which this was, I mean, all five of these were very life transforming. As we went through each of these, it just really catapulted his health and our health, the family, to a different level, a big different level. And that is community. And surrounding ourselves with others who are supporting us on this journey. We were never meant to be alone. We were never meant to be surrounded by people who saying, you can't do that. You're crazy. Like, that doesn't make any sense. We were not surrounded, been created to be in a bucket where, every, you know, everyone's trying to pull us back down as we're trying to get out. We were 
meant to be surrounded by others to help us out of that pit. So it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to especially help correct our health, whether it's a child or an adult. So this is, again, I say all of these are like the most important. They all, all five of these are the most important is to make sure you're connecting with others who are supportive on our journey. Finding someone to mentor us. I mean, I would, I need to put in there mentors, plural, because there's been many mentors on our journey. We have the most amazing family physician on the planet. Like, I don't know if there's anyone else. There's probably others that are similarly amazing. I, I guess I should say he's the, the only one, but he is awesome. So we, he, um, was a pivotal character and a, and a huge support for getting us to where we are today, to where I am, to why you and I are here today. A lot of that he helped to really shift and get me honed in on the path that we are today. And that I've also connected with many, many other mentors along the way. Um, I just cannot emphasize enough of connecting with others, finding others to help teach you, to show you, hey, what they have learned, learning from others and helping to you what you can learn. And I'm not saying, oh, go get someone to tell you X, Y, Z, but to help you to learn those things so that you are empowered as well, becoming empowered, finding someone who will empower you to do the things that you need to do so that you can take charge of your health. And the very foundation is to follow your instincts. Every single one of these things is about following your instincts. Um, our instincts are just an amazing thing that we were given by our creator. So these things just really help to, are the glue that hold all these other things together. Every single thing is important, whether it's the glue, the pieces, all of those things make a huge, huge difference. And it's how we can transform our health. And it's the things that we, these are the, the, the core things that we need to do where we're listening to our symptoms and we're supporting the body in what is it that it's needing instead of you know blocking it taking out check engine lights we provide it with that healing fuel and the nutrition and we're investing and take, taking the time investing our time and money and resources to say hey i need help and guidance with this so it's these five things is what made it possible for us to resolve my child's chronic health issues that led up to his autoimmunity and it's these five things that I believe is right now, which is what will help us to resolve his autoimmunity long term. When I find the next thing that gets us to the next point, I will totally share that with you. So make sure you're on the lookout for that because if there's more to that, I will absolutely share you. That's where I'm at now is to this is what it takes to get to where we are at. And as and we are still making positive movements forward on resolving his autoimmunity. So today I promise you guys that, okay, you're going to learn why it is that you guys, if you've been trying these different things, um, you know, why they're not working. So I hope that you feel that you understand and have a really good understanding as to why it is when we take a medication or when we're taking herbs and you're not getting what everyone raves about, oh, if I take X, Y, Z, I should be healed. I hope that you guys have a better understanding of that. And um, you're welcome to reach out to me and ask me any questions that you have and connect with me. And I also hope you can understand and and embrace that instinct when you come across a practitioner who's just trying to give you the latest herb for that or the latest pill for that versus someone who really is helping you to dig in they may not have all the answers they might not be able to say okay yeah i know this is xyz i mean the dr jeremy and i jeremy smith and i spent hours every week we had an hourly appointment i was like on the last of his schedule every single tuesday four o'clock and we would brainstorm he's like you know i don't know I don't know how many times he says, you know what? I don't know, Selena, but here, let's try to find that out. Like, I don't know how many, it was every single week. He was like, I, you know, or, or he's like, oh, I do know here. Let me show you. So that's what we need. So that's the type of practitioner. It's not that we had to find one that, oh, they know all the answers, but one who is like, you know what? I don't know, but let's do this together. That's the key, you know? And I hope that you finally no longer have that worry because I know as a mom, what it's like to lay up at night and be worried about, okay, am I going to be able to help my child? Because now they have this chronic illness that they're stuck with. There's nothing we can do, but you do have renewed hope that if you've spent years and spinning around in circles, that there is hope. There are answers. I may not have the answers for you. Somewhere the answers are out there. I would certainly help you find those answers. I would give you 
every bit of knowledge that I have and share with you everything that I have. And what I don't have, I will help you find whatever that is. And whatever, there are others like me out there. I'm not the only one. There are so many others like me out there, just like Dr. Smith, the, the 50, 60, 70, 80, hundreds of others that I have connected with. There's other practitioners out there who say, hey, you know what? I don't know. But guess what? Let's go find that out together. That's you know a great question. I would like to learn that myself. So I hope that you no longer have that fear of, okay, I'm never going to be able to find help because you can find help. And that you can actually have confidence that you know what? We can come to a resolution. No matter what they've been, you've been told, there's a way to come to a resolution. So here's how you can connect with me. If you want to reach out to me and you have any questions, um, I am moving away from Facebook. Um, I do have some stuff still on Facebook. I'm moving, trans transitioning out of Facebook. Um, and right now I'm using MeWe. So you can find me on MeWe. I've got a group there all about MTHFR genetics and epigenetics. Um, and then you can also find me on my website. I've got a couple different websites. I have the functionalhealthmama.com and then I have the functional perspective. And so eventually I probably will merge the two, but you know, they're just, anyway, so you can find me those ways, the functional health mama or just, I'm sorry, functional health mama or the functional perspective.com. And this has been wonderful, you know, being able to connect with you guys. And I hope that this has provided you guys with information. I also am going to have um, a guide, a, a, just a strategy guide that you guys should have get a link to on that. And over that, it's going to give you an overview of genetics, the introductory and genetics. I've got also um, a really, really good book that I really, really like is Dirty Genes by Dr. Ben Lynch. Um, it's a fantastic overview. I would just caution on running out and uh, getting supplements for whatever. But he, I really especially love Dr. Lynch because he emphasizes over and over and over again that we have to put things in context. While XYZ supplement, this is how this supports that pathway. I'm not saying run out and get that. So I love that he emphasizes that. So just please make sure that um, I can't stress that enough that the information in that book is to help you understand how those nutrients and how those supplements work. They may be what you need, but just so you can put things into bigger context. There's other books that I like as well. Um, but just, yeah, I've got other resources. There's uh, websites that are, uh, have really, really good information. I can put some links to those hopefully um, below as well. If you really want to delve into genomics and understanding the genes and understanding nutrigenomics and methylgenetics and all these, the biochemistry and all those things, uh, functional genomic analysis and the Methylgenetic Research Institute have a wonderful, wonderful educational series. Most of it is free and it's at a practitioner level. So you're getting the nitty gritty information. And I know that's one frustration that I had was it seems like you know, you go to the doctor and it's like, I just need to know what they knew. If I just knew what they learned in medical school, I just want to know that. Cause if I knew that, like, what were they taught? Then I could give them the answer. And it's like, but you just seem like you never can get there. Well, that problem is they're not taught the answers to the questions that we have that our instinct is asking, but that's another, anyway, but this methylgenetic um, does teach those things. It's a, it's a, a naturopath based. So it's natural medicine based. This is looking at why does the body respond? Let's walk you through those things. So if you want to learn that, I'll have a link below on that. Most of it's free. Um, the entire course, I think right now is on like four ninety five. which I've, we've taken, I've taken tons and tons of courses on functional medicine, um, natural medicine, and these kinds of things. They are giving it away. That's a steal. I mean, it's more of the courses that are five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar level courses. The information they are giving is what you would find in those things. And some of it, you wouldn't even find it in those $15,000 courses. And so it's just absolutely blew my mind away as to the information they're giving because they have a true passion to empower you, to empower practitioners, to empower everyone with this knowledge. And so it's a just amazing, amazing, amazing opportunity. There's also one in uh, Mugents, Cogents, I'm sorry, Cogents Immunology. Um, has a really nice free series, uh, introductory series um, on their site. It's not, it's, you know, uh, very, very basic, but it still is very, very eye-opening to see on there. So I'll have that link below as well. That is a really good uh, educational videos on understanding that immune response, what I talked about earlier. And when I came across that one, it was like, oh my goodness, finally, I've been vindicated and validated with the things I've been saying for years about the autoimmune. It's like, no, our body is not confused. 
And so, I mean, that course has been out there for years. I didn't realize it until I came across it. But there's just to say that there's a lot of really in-depth resources. If you're wanting to say, hey, I want to know those things. If you love the biochemistry, if you love that kind of stuff, let me know and I can hook you up with different resources for that. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys um, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And thank you so much for sticking out with me. And um, I wish you guys a well journey and hope that you guys can transcend into wellness because that's the summit here and that what this uh, presentation is all about is helping to empower you guys for moving forward into wellness. So you all take care and have a great day.